If you have an email list, you get to call the shots. You decide when you're going to email and they can get that email. Hey friends, welcome back to The Christian Podcaster. This is the new and improved revised version of The Christian Podcaster, and I'm glad you are here. My name is Eric Nevins. I am not only your host today for this journey, but also uh, the founder of Christian Podcasters Association, which started as a free Facebook group. Some of you are watching us in there right now. And uh, now we have, uh, you know, all kinds of things to offer, memberships and coaching and all those things that uh, can help you take your podcast that next step, take it to that place where you actually want it to go. I'm excited to bring in our guest today. We are going to talk about marketing art from Authentic Online Marketing. Our guest is Ruthie Gray. Ruthie, welcome to the Christian Podcaster. Thank you. Always good to be with you, Eric, and just have a good chat. Yep, it is good. I know we've we've done this a few times. You were with us on uh, International Podcast Day uh, yes. back in September, right? That yep. was a lot of fun. And every time I get to talk to you, it is enlightening. I always learn <laughs> something. I always feel a little bit challenged about my Instagram presence, <laughs> but that's a good thing. That's why that's, I like that. So yeah, that's uh, a good we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that. So um, give us just kind of that overview. Your your business is authentic online marketing. We're going to talk about all those things, but tell us a little bit right now about yourself and kind of how you serve online creators. Well, basically I teach Christian entrepreneurs, mostly female, um, Instagram and email marketing so they can sell their stuff or drive traffic somewhere without feeling sleazy. That is the goal. (laughs) Right. And that's a really key thing because selling can feel a little bit like that, can't it? Like mm-hmm. if you're if you're sharing your, your stuff, um, finding that really true place in yourself to share it from, knowing that you're helping other people is kind of a big deal. It is a big deal um, because likely if you are on, if you're online driving traffic somewhere, it's because you passionately believe in your message. But how to get that across that others can believe that, too, in your own authentic voice and way, that's the key. Once you can lock in on that and you believe yourself and your own message, it really changes the game. Yeah. So is that the number one problem that people run into with online marketing is being authentic? I don't think it's necessarily um, authenticity as it is they don't understand um, how like the the sort of the mechanics of or not even the mechanics, but the psychology really of Mm. driving traffic like we get so passionate and caught up in our message that we think if we just say, go here and listen to this or go there and click that link, um, that that's going to work. And that does not work for people, especially um, now I will say Instagram is becoming more and more uh, a marketplace. And so people do go there to purchase now. um, But you have to tell it in a way that really is authentic. And I think what people are missing is you need to share a little bit about yourself. You have to be an approachable person Mm -hmm. The people, your audience needs to learn who you are and you have to earn their trust basically is what it is. And we skip that. So really that's the basic biggest reason. The biggest problem is that, online marketers want to skip that step and just go for the jugular and (laughs) click the link. They want to skip the step. This is what you're saying. They want to skip the step of building trust. That's it. Yes. Okay. I love that. I'll tell you why, because I think that's actually one of the things that podcasting is actually really good at, right? I do too. Is building trust. That's why we, we have, you know, any show, if what you're trying to build is something beyond the show, right? Whether it's a ministry or a business or whatever, 
Mm -hmm. podcasting can really help you build trust. Um, have you seen that to be true with your podcast or two? You, you have a show. So what's, have you seen that to be true in your two and a half years of podcasting? Absolutely. That was the best move I could have made for my business because people, when they hear your voice and your certain innuendos and inflections and like, I'll break out into random song like that on the podcast. And <laughs> it's just, I was listening today. I heard you do that. <laughs> you did. Well, and it, it, it's just, that is me. That is me at my core. That is the voice that my kids grew up with. My son calls it mom's pool voice. Like when I get in the pool with the kids, it's just, I'm just happy. And, uh, and so those are the things that endear you to your listeners. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is true. I have to say all the time about that. I think audio creates this really intimate um, situation, right? So like, think about the number of people who you've heard speak in your ear directly. It's not very many. And usually they're very close connections, a mom, a dad, a lover, a child, something like that. Right. And that is, so when we put headphones on, you have that chance to speak into somebody's life right there. You feel like, you know, somebody, right. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And so you come to either, you either like them or you don't like them. And, right. and that's the good news because if they do like you, then, you know, that kind of paves the way for them to trust you and to go wherever you're trying to drive traffic and market. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I want to know, why does it matter that we be authentic in our online presence? Why is that a big deal? Well, again, it all, all goes back to uh, building trust with someone. So for instance, since my specialty is Instagram, um, Instagram is about, it provides this great way to really connect with uh, your followers through really stories. Stories are my thing. Mm. I love stories more than anything else. And that's where I do most of my marketing. That's where most of my purchasers are, is in stories. In fact, we just led a 30-day story challenge um, in our free Facebook group. And we did it there were so many people that were involved and did not realize the power of stories. So we didn't even post reels or anything for 30 days. And so if you can get in stories and share not just your message, but share behind the scenes of your business or your podcast, but also behind the scenes of your life. Like I've been sharing beach <laughs> videos today. I saw the blimp. I saw the Goodyear blimp. It went right over top of me and I'm going to post that video later. That's and super cool. my people love it. They love, I just had a brand new grandson. He is two and a half weeks oh, old yeah. and everyone loves him. Everybody loves Franklin. And that is just the way that I build trust and relationships with my people. They come to know me, they like me, and then they trust me. And then they buy from me a lot of time. Not all of them, but a lot of times they do. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's that no like and trust factor, which I don't, I don't know of any other platform that, I mean, social goes into that when you can do pictures and stuff, but I think podcasting does a really good job um, of creating that if, if you show up authentically. Okay. So I know there's somebody out there asking this question. Um, and I was thinking about this in terms of when we talk about authentic, I think so many people, particularly on Instagram, they have personas, right? TikTok, they have, they have personas that they bring to their, to their online presence. And there are some gurus out there. I was trying to think of, uh, I forget the guy's name, but who will actually tell you to do that, right? Who will tell you to be, you know, look like you have it all together or look like, you know, put it, put on this persona and be that achiever, you know, mm -hmm. like a sports sports person. That's kind of the opposite of what you're saying. So is there a risk to developing a persona like that online? I just think because I am all about authenticity, I think that if you are not who you're pretending to be, 
then your people are going to see through that and you're not really going to to build that trust. I feel like the more authentic you can be and the more like my whole thing is use what you've got. You don't have to be fantastic at video to do a reel. Start where you are. You don't have to have the perfect background or the perfect clothing or the perfect anything to get started marketing on Instagram. You just need to start. And so I think people that put pressure to look like you have it all together, um, that's just not, that's not something that appeals to me. And it's not ever something that appeals to my people either because part of my mantra is Instagram and email marketing. So easy. Your mom can do it. You just start. So if people know that by your example, you're not perfect either. I'm not perfect. I don't have a giant following, but I can still market. If I can do it, you can do it. And, and so that's why I'm so passionate about that kind of message. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen these TikToks. Right? So I, be, I spend too much time on TikTok. Let's just don't tell anybody in between <laughs> you and me. But um, I, I've seen these and you see people. It's, it's one thing in an audio platform. It's very different. Like on a TikTok, people share like their piles of laundry and, you know, dirt sinks full of dishes or, or whatever, you know, a car that's got French fries that are three years old under the seat, you know, <laughs> you know how that goes. I have four kids. I'm not confessing to anything, but yeah, that might've happened. So, um, there's kind of this, you know, people share the mess and then sometimes it's more emotional or relational kind of things that people mm -hmm. share. Are there risks to doing that? Are there risks to, to sharing those kinds of things? Oh, there's going to always be a risk. If you're going to be public, you're going to have risks and you have to be okay with that. What you do need to do is decide what's off limits. And your usually your family plays into that. They mm -hmm. want some boundaries or they don't want everybody knowing everything. And so I do, I'm not a proponent of sharing everything. I think that you need to keep some stuff private. Um, and yeah. that also plays still into authenticity and earning people's trust by not airing everything online. Mm, wait, say more about that. Why does that play into earning trust? Well, if you are going to be one of those people that shares um, things about your mother-in-law or, you know, you take people um, through something that you are dealing with with a neighbor or somebody is suing you. I mean, it just depends on... Oh, your yeah. what is your message but personally i think y if you're going to be a person of character that people trust to take people on a journey then there's there have got to be some things that you just keep private and right. and and maintain maintain a professionality not a persona but a professionality so that there are. That's a really great distinction, actually. I like that. That helps me a lot because I think there are these kind of two different ways to go about it. And certainly I've seen people sharing about the suing their neighbors or whatever or lawsuits there. I'm like, whoa, that seems like a bad idea. I'm guessing your <laughs> lawyer said not to do that, right? Uh, and that seems, that seems like a bad, it's just not a great thing. Or you can say yeah. things that will further damage relationships. Okay. So keep, keep some boundaries, but it's okay to share the mess of, of your, of life with people. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. decide what are you going to share that's real and raw and what are you not going to share? Yeah. So what are a few ways that people can be authentic in their online presence and then still promote their show and feel good about it, you know, when, when they're done? Because I, I have this conversation all the time with podcasters, right? Where it's like, well, I don't want to, where, where are you sharing it? Uh, I post it on Facebook. Okay. Where else are you sharing it? Right. There's, we, you, you got to get it, get the word out there so widely if you want to want people to do it. So how can people do that and feel good about it? how you can do it and feel good about it is by not just always saying, go listen to my podcast, 
but coming about it from different angles. Like for me, I'll make a reel that is a podcast soundbite in the background, but maybe the reel is something like the beach or uh, me working. And, and so people are hearing my voice, but they're also seeing through video what I'm doing. And then another thing that I think that is lacking is likely there are good nuggets of wisdom or, you know, advice or tips or education on your podcast, take one of those points. Like if your podcast is about seven points, just take one and make a reel about it. Just make it simple, you know, but if you give to your community and you're, and you're sharing knowledge instead of just asking, 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 go listen to the podcast. I mean, you have to, you have to build the need for them to go listen to your podcast. The way I did that was I just gave, I gave a lot of tips on Instagram at first before I ever started my podcast. I also built my newsletter and I would give tips on there too. And so I would go live and people would ask me questions. And then I was like, you know, I could reach a lot larger audience if I released a podcast. Let's try this. And it was true. So now people know that they're going to get more of me on the podcast than just the one tip. They'll get the seven tips. And then they want to. Like when I put it out on Monday, I'm like, go listen to eight ways to drive traffic to your email list. They're going to go and they're going to share it. Right. Because they they understand that it's valuable. They got the taste and they went to the podcast. Right. And then Mm -hmm. they're going to share that with the other people who they know are wrestling with the same idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So one thing you mentioned this earlier, and I always think this is really interesting. Um, you talk about combining kind of Instagram and email Mm -hmm. and I talk about this with podcasters a lot because I think email is like the last thing everybody does. It is. And it needs to be one of the first things that you do. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, talk about, um, you know, I, I love that you're, that you're doing that. You know, why should podcasters start now with their email list instead of waiting? even if they have a small audience. Well, you could, you need to start yesterday for sure. And the reason (laughs) is, (laughs) okay. So Instagram is just its own. It loves Instagram. Instagram does not love you. And so it's going to do whatever they are going to do, whatever they want to do. They're going to throw us whatever curve balls they want to throw. And they're going to change things on us, change things around, the technology and stuff like that. Or some days they shut down randomly for like six hours. But if you have an email list, you get to call the shots. You decide when you're going to email and they can get that email. (laughs) You can email three times a week. You can email once a month, but you can develop a rapport with that person because everybody checks their email. Not everybody checks Instagram, but they check their email and that is a way one-on-one for you to get their attention and to build a deeper trust. And the people that are on your email list are going to be your purchasers. Do I have purchasers on Instagram? Yes, but largely they're both on Instagram and on my email list. The majority of the people are on my, on my list. And so if you want to launch, then you have a list to launch to. You have a captive audience. Even if you think you don't have time, that is way more important than building an online presence. Do it at the same time, but get started on that email list make an opt-in, make a checklist. It doesn't have to be a lot. Make a series of three videos that show how to build a 
model plane or something, you know, whatever your, whatever your, um, your, yeah. you know, message is what, about. What, yeah. Whatever your niche is. Right. So yeah. what, whatever the thing is that you're, that you're doing. So just, you know, if you, so whatever it is, you can find something, somebody needs to know that information. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm trying to think of some of the people that we have in the group, you know, um, in Christian Podcasters Association, if your show is about faith and how uh, to get through challenging seasons in your faith. Okay. So that's my show halfway there, how to get through the whole, the whole journey. Um, You know, you could be something about the four stages of the spiritual journey, right? Could Mm -hmm. share something like that. I wrote one called how to, what to do when you're mad at God. Right. Cause I think a lot of people are struggling with that Mm -hmm. using Habakkuk and we, and we did that. So super easy, not super complicated. And the beauty of it is you set up one time, right? And then it can go yeah. out a lot of times. Yeah, it can. You can repurpose. Well, I'm a big into repurposing content anyway. Um, but you can repurpose those emails. Like say you write a welcome series. That's great. That's done. It goes to people as soon as they come on. But then let's say you do a, a newsletter once a month. Then after a year goes by or even half a year, you could send those same emails because if you are getting new people on your list, they haven't seen that content. Plus, I guarantee you the people that are already on your list will not remember in Mm -hmm. six months because we have short attention spans. And even if they liked your email, they're going to forget because everybody's got one zillion emails in their inbox. (laughs) Yeah. And maybe they didn't even read it, right? Maybe they just saw the headline. Maybe they, yes. they didn't ever even click on it. Um, this is advice that I heard, I think Donald Miller say, uh, maybe somebody else, but about basically the point isn't even the content. The content is valuable and you need to create it. But the point is to get in somebody's inbox to be um, top of mind. Yes. Right? So, that, so that they go. So I send an email every week when my podcast goes out mm-hmm. so that people know that it, there's a new episode out there. I don't, I should, I could tell you what the open rates would are if I looked at it, but more likely what I think is happening is people see that and they go, Oh, halfway there. I love, you know, love to listen to that. Uh, Obviously everybody who gets my email loves my show and, uh, (laughs) and they, they go in and they, and then they, they think, Oh, I'm going to go download it. Right. And they flip over and they, and they download it, whether they ever use the link in the email or not. Right. Yeah, Exactly. Yeah. So you want to stay top of mind. So email, my friends, if you don't have an email list, you want to get an email list right away. You can use platforms like MailChimp. Uh, AWeber is a great one as well. They're sort of OG email marketing, right? They're they're a, a big deal. Inside, uh, we actually have a, a link uh, in the membership to AWeber where you can get some cool things as well. If you go through us, that's that's great. Uh, but you don't have to. Whatever, just pick one. Convert Kit's great. There's a lot of them that are that are really good. What do you use, Ruthie? Do you have a? I platform? use. I love Convert Kit, and I use it. But yeah. for beginners, I recommend MailerLite because MailerLite there you go. is well. Convert Kit has a free version too, but I feel like MailerLite is very beginner email friendly. They have a fantastic chat um, support. They've got all these one minute videos for how to set up your sequences and landing pages and anything you want. Start with MailerLite if you're just starting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's okay. Like it, it can be free. And that's a great point actually to say that um, you don't have to buy the service right away. If that's no. a hang up, just get, get one that's free and grow into it. Most of the services have a free version to let you grow into. Yes. And here's the thing. As you're growing, you start marketing because that you market to your list. And then that way, once those fees do kick in, usually it's at like a thousand subscribers, then you already have some funds there to take care of the fees for your email list. Okay. So that's a great segue to what I wanted to ask you. Um, I I think I know what you're going to say to this, but do you need to have a huge platform in order to be able to monetize and use your, your email list? No way. 
you can start right away. I mean, it's good. The goal is, you know, you should try to get to a thousand people, but you can, you can absolutely sell to less. You can sell to a hundred people. You, and, and the same goes for, uh, on Instagram. If you are targeted with your niche and you know who you're trying to reach, you can market right there too. So it doesn't have to be this long thing where you wait. You can do it. Just, you know, I would probably advise try to get a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so get a hundred. I, I think the reason that a lot of people want you to wait is because it's usually just a plot. It's a, it's a percentage, right. Is what's going to generally mm-hmm. happen. Mm-hmm. So um, if, if you have a thousand people on your list and you have a 2% response rate, right. You're going to get whatever, 20 people uh, per mm-hmm. purchasing. That's pretty common. That's pretty normal. And so it can mm-hmm. be pretty discouraging if it's whatever 2% of a hundred is, right. Is that two people? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I shouldn't do math live, but, the, uh, but, I try not to but you, get the, you get the idea. So <laughs> it can be discouraging. So you just have to take that into account as well. Yes, but for sure. It, ge- it gives you a reason to keep growing and to keep working with it. All right. So connect those two for us. Cause you said you can do this with Instagram and with email. How do you use the two together? Do you do them, do them separately or how do you, how do you bring them? Together? I do them together. Um, so here's a secret ninja tip. <laughs> I just, I just finished a launch. Um, Authentic Online Marketing School doors just opened for 2023. And so we launched last week, well, on Black Friday. And something that I always do is I'll go live with my former members or current members and they will talk about the product and what they what they got out of it, how they learned how to market on this, on Instagram, and how they developed a welcome series with email and a newsletter um, template, and you know copy and how they use the launch templates. And so, um, when people see that social proof, I almost always get a purchase after going live. And so that's one thing that I do is go live. Another thing that I do is if people are considering my product, I will reach out to them in Messenger, but not just in a text. I will actually video myself and send them a video of me talking to them. That goes a long way with people developing trust. If you take the time to talk to people, and present your message and present the product and address their questions, it goes a long, long way. So the way I use correlate Instagram with email is I'll say, I'll send my email, like say if it's a launch sequence, I'll say I'm going live tomorrow teaching XYZ. Here's the link because I'll usually do a countdown in stories and I'll say, here's the link, set the reminder and join me. And so that's kind of how I do it. I uh, do a lot of back and forth with the Instagram and the email marketing. Um, And I will hit all of the neighborhoods in Instagram. So I will talk about it in stories and I will do a lot of background stuff in stories that I don't do like in reels. And then I'll take a little tip and I'll do a reel like I, and then I'll go live and then I'll do just a static image. But I'm also, you know, sending emails. Like if I'm launching emails are going out every day and then I'll say, did you catch the live? If you didn't, here's the link. You can watch it later. And a lot of people, when they see that social proof, then they realize this really works. So it's all about video. We are really, you know, in the video age. And you don't have to be an expert to do video. Like Eric, you even said, <laughs> this is new for you, video. I did. <laughs> but you have to start somewhere. That's why I love stories yep. so much. Um, you can just, you can like just play with it in stories and then just delete it. If you don't like, it. you don't even have to post it, you know, but you have yep. to start somewhere. 
Well, I do. And the reason I, I said that earlier is because this is before we started recording, uh, but it, because um, I really want you, everyone to know that I do practice what I preach. Right. So like so I've been podcasting six and a half years, been reflecting on that. It took me two years to start my show. Right. Because I was just trying to, I was scared of getting everything perfect. That's different today because I know what to do and I know at least this much I can get behind a mic and ask some questions and find great guests like Ruthie. But the um, but, you, you know, mastering all the other technology, I'm going to learn it. And I mm-hmm. know that in a year or two, it's going to be old hat and it'll be super easy for me for me to do. But you can't be um, afraid to get in and look like you don't know what you're doing for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that is is huge. I think it applies to both what we're talking about email and Instagram as well, right? Sometimes you just got to show up and give it a shot and keep going Absolutely. and it'll develop over time. When I made my first email opt-in, when I was first learning how to do email, I was like, I have no idea. What am <laughs> right? I going to offer that anyone wants? You know, and the very first opt-in, because I had a parenting site at the time, was my top 10 tips to rear a confident young man based on what I'd observed from my son, who was an adult by then. And people actually wanted that. They opted in. I remember getting, getting followers, um, subscribers. And I was like, I can't believe this. And I saw the number rise and rise and it rose that, that first hundred, those first hundred subscribers were a huge, huge boost to my confidence. Right. Right. Completely agree. And just keep going. That's one thing um, that you cannot underestimate the value of is just showing, continuing to show up, right? It's true for podcasting. It's true for social. It's true for email. Keep sending the emails, keep trying things, keep doing them over and over again. And that will help. So I think that's, uh, it's really important. All right. Um, Ruthie, I love the idea. I love the authentic piece. I'm glad we had that conversation about discussing, hey, how do we show up authentically? I think for us as Christians, we often are a little hesitant about that, right? We don't want to put on a, a persona and, that we do um, mm-hmm. on, on social, but we also aren't sure if we can show up as our full self because it's, uh, you know, it's social media and who knows what's going to happen. But yeah. Uh, you gave us some great insight on that. Tell us more about your programs and kind of how you encourage people to be more authentic online and what you're, what you're offering at the moment. Um, well, we have authentic online marketing school, which is the perfect blend of Instagram and email marketing. And so we take you through um, the first four weeks is the four things that never change on Instagram. <laughs> A lot <laughs> does, but you need, a killer bio so that people know what you're about. You need followers. That's week two or actually week two is content. You need good content and consistent content. Like you were just saying, Mm -hmm. consistency trumps all really it does. And then, and then you need followers. So you need to know how to get them. And then you need a good way to drive traffic from you need to know how to drive traffic off of Instagram, wherever you're trying to drive it. Um, We are especially capitalizing on the email list. (laughs) So then um, one of our bonuses is an opt-in workshop so that you can figure out what it is that you can offer for email. And then we do, we do four weeks of email marketing where I take them through Um, how to do a welcome series. And we actually critique what they're writing. Some people take it again, um, because they are, uh, once you purchase, once you're an authentic online marketing student, you get to sit in on the lives even later when it launches again. So a lot of uh, our people pivot. So then they come back and they're like, I want to do this again. I want to re refurbish my bio uh, on Instagram, or I want more input on what I'm offering now in email marketing. So um, we help them develop a newsletter template and a story swipe file. I'm big on telling through story, marketing through story. Um, That's how I market. Mm -hmm. 
that's how I do my emails. And um, so basically that's what we do is authentic online marketing school. And I have a, a, a couple other things on my website that you can look at, but basically that is our, that's our big deal. All right. Well, friends, the place to go is authentic online marketing.com. And then you can find all that information for everything and everything that Ruthie is doing. So again, authentic online marketing.com go and check that out right now. Uh, if you're listening as we're recording, uh, it's it opened, right? Is that right? And then it's open tentatively. Yes. Um, okay, we, we took away some early birds, but we still have some slots. If you no are spots. listening, you know, Re- through the end of December. There you go. Reach out. And uh, when you're, if you're listening to this audio, because audio lives forever, right? So we'll put it out there. Go, still go to online authentic marketing mm-hmm. and uh, see, you can get on, get her downloads and all that. All right, friends. Thanks for listening today. If you want more of this kind of content, uh, you know, Christian Podcasters Association is for you. We have memberships I mentioned, including CP Silver, where uh, videos of these conversations will live. And we're going to do a Q&A, which we're going to do right now. Uh, and all that's going to live in there as well. So uh, we're going to answer your questions and you can get access to that there as well. So that's at christianpodcastersassociation.com slash silver. So thanks, Ruthie. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>